time we do something right. Every time we do something that is that we succeed or we get that we meet that goal or we get that job that we're looking for or we accomplish something, all of a sudden that pride just rises up and pumps up in us. And it takes root. And we get puffed up. We get puffed up. And our head begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> and we, we become blinded. We, we become blind because we're lovers of ourselves. We, we are blind to what God is saying. We don't even hear when somebody talks to us. We think, what are they talking about? I, I'm right here. You know, I do this and I do that and I do this and they do all this and blah, 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 blah and yada, 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 yada. But you don't know, Miss Karen. They do this and I come back and, and this is going on and that's going on and, and I 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 In Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 17, we are told that pride will destroy our wisdom. Hello. It will destroy our wisdom because we've taken on the wisdom of our stinking, yucky self. We no longer are following after God's wisdom. We're following ourselves. The word says here, we are told that pride will destroy our wisdom. And it, it exactly says your heart became proud on account of your beauty. And you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. He's talking about Satan. Amen. He got so angry at him, he threw him to the earth. Amen. That shows some relevance to me. Back to the dirt where we came from. We were made from the dust of the earth. We're dirt bags. I've said it before. <laughs> we are dirt bags. And Ezekiel 11, 20, it describes the emotion that caused Satan to fall from grace. It was pride. He plummeted from being a model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect beauty, to have to come to a horrible end. His end is going to be an eternal life in hell which was created for him and his angels. Amen. And he and his, uh, he knows his time is coming to an end. So he's working over time, trying to cause all of us to fall. You wonder why you're attacked? If you got any anointing or any sense at all about you, you're going to be attacked. Amen. Count it all joy. Have it all joy. Other things that cause crime wealth, status, self indulgence, beauty, self confidence these all cause pride to take place in our heart. In James 4, 6, it says, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Amen. It's plainly clear that Satan, pride, and hell go hand in hand. His pride sent him there. His pride got him thrown out of heaven. So what makes us think that when this puffs up in us and we become having big heads and becoming puffed up, that, it's, that we are better than everybody else and that we know it all. It is such a, it's such a blinding thing because we can't see the trees for the forest. It grows so much in us that we're just so blinded and we don't, we don't see. The life of Jesus is given. And I was so glad that Eddie talk, touched on that, about doing good, 
about, and one of the, because one of the scriptures that the Lord was just kind of putting through my head was, Jesus went about doing good. And another scripture is, we overcome evil by doing good. We do not overcome evil by becoming puffed up and thinking we are better than everybody else. That we've got the heavy red. That we know it. You know, it doesn't matter. We all have faults. But the word says, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, that we are to restore such a person in the spirit of meekness. It does not say to go behind their back and go, blah, 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 blah. It says to restore them in the spirit of meekness. And meekness does not mean weakness. Meekness can mean a confrontation, exposing their sin to them. That is meekness. Because you're loving, you're trying to bring perfection into their life. Because we go from faith to faith to faith. We grow in our grace. In Matthew 11, 29 through and 30, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and there you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. If you're carrying a burden that feels too heavy, Either A, you are into pride, or B, you're carrying a burden you weren't meant to carry. Because the Word says that His yoke is easy and His burden is light. A lot of people look at me at everything that I do every day of the week, and they say, I don't know how you do it. And me, I'm the Energizer Bunny. I go and I go and I go. And I plug in and I go some more. You want to know why? Because it's his yoke and it's his burden. And his burden is easy and his burden is light. He doesn't put anything on me that's too heavy. He puts on me what he knows I can handle and he equips me to handle it. Trust me. If he did not equip me, this chick couldn't do it. Because let me tell you, when this chick gets in the flesh, this chick gets tired. When I get tired, I go to bed. Because Hawkeye knows if I don't go to bed when I'm tired, the next thing happens is the roof will come off the house. Because I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, boy. <laughs> so, he knows when I say that I'm tired, and I never say that unless, I am, unless I'm exhausted. Then I will say it, and he knows, okay, honey, he'll tell me, go to bed. Go to bed, get some rest, you need to rest. Because he knows if I keep on going, when I'm tired, what's going to happen. So he encourages me to get the rest. But you know what? God says that he gives his beloved rest. I may not always get the physical rest that People say that you need eight hours of this and this and that and a little toe of this and a little sprinkle of that and take that vitamin and this and herb and, and this will do it. Let me tell you what, I take nothing. Amen. I don't take nothing. I eat food, I drink water, I drink coffee, I try to eat healthy, but am I pumping myself full of energy drinks and B12 and this and that and the other? No, I do not. My strength comes from my joy in the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And I know when I get tired, I've lost my joy. So I need to go rest, pray, get in the Word, and get my joy back. And then I'm back to being the energizer bunny. Running around everywhere, getting things done. And you know what? You can do the same thing. It's called obedience. It's called obedience. But we're too, we're too puffed up with pride to submit ourselves to authority or to be humble because we know it all. I do all this. And they don't do nothing. And everything they do, they mess up. 
I have about 55 people inside the building. This is a walkthrough back to the prayer garden. Good morning. Good morning. Just better make this place as presentable as possible. We have a speaker. Ministry to ministry to ministry to ministry. And they get out and the first day they're out, they get trashed or whatever. You know, they're going to have quite a story to tell. Them. I have a lot of people outside today. I know somebody has been to 16, 17 different ministries. Still using crap. I mean, uh, still got As soon as church is over, we set up the sanctuary into an area where we feed the people. So we got about 40 people outside today. If your heart is Set up a speaker outside so people here. You want to continue to live like hell. That is your prerogative. That's totally your choice. Amen? Praise God. I rest my case.